Hello people, in this video we want to look at this topic otosclerosis, right? It is also called as otospongiosis. So whenever you are seeing oto, it is referring to what? The ear, right? So in the ear, some sclerosing, some, some hardening is happening or some spongy bone is forming, right? So here is the ear, where is the middle ear? Okay, this is the middle ear, right? This part is your middle ear, from your eardrum till the stapes, right? You can see this is your middle ear. Now here actually what is getting sclerosed? The foot plate of the stapes, right? You know what the stapes bone is, right? Here you can see stapes marked here. So this is your stapes bone. So this is something is happening to this. So there is sclerosis hardening. This bone is becoming spongy. It should not become, that is not right. So spongy it is becoming. So it is autospongiosis. So overall, what do you think will happen if this happens? So basically, what is the job of the ossicles? To conduct the sound, right? So the sound should have got conducted and it should have got passed on to the inner ear, right? This is your cochlea, which is supposed to do all the hearing and sending the impulse to the brain. But the sound transmission, the conduction of the sound will not happen properly. So basically, these people should have conductive deafness. Along with this, they can have a little uh, inner ear uh, problem. So that can be sensory neural hearing loss also can be there. Mainly what will be the conducting, conductive hearing loss. We will look at what orthosclerosis is. We look at its etiology. That means the causes, the pathology, basically exactly what is happening. Types of otosclerosis. Now there are different types of otosclerosis also. Symptoms, what this patient will present to it. What are the signs that a doctor will elicit, right? What will you see? Differential diagnosis for otosclerosis. How will you treat it? And then in treatment, there is something called a stepidectomy. In that full details, they will tell you the steps of the stepidectomy, contraindications on whom you should not do, complications of the stepidectomy. So all this we will look at. Now let's get started. Okay, people, how is it? Uh, what are we going to look at? Otosclerosis or otospongiosis. Okay. So here we are. It is uh, otosclerosis more aptly called as otospongiosis. Otospongiosis is a better name. It is a more apt name. Why? And uh, this is a disease of what? Of the bone. Of the bony labyrinth you can see. Labyrinth is actually inner ear, isn't it? So it is the disease of the bony labyrinth. So basically the normal thing that should be there is the enchondral bone. Okay. Enchondral layer of bony otic capsule. See this bony otic capsule has three layers in that the enchondral layer is normal. It should, that's the way it's supposed to be. Dense enchondral layer should be there. But that is getting replaced with what? Irregularly laid spongy bone. It is becoming spongy bone. So that is why it is called as otospongiosis. See here you can see otic capsule. It is the bony labyrinth. It has three layers. What and all? Endosteal, enchondral, periosteal. So what and all? End, endoosteal or endosteal, enchondral. Enchond and periosteal, right? These are the layers. So, in that enchondral is the one that is normally should be there, but that will get replaced with spongy bone. Basically, con chondral means what? It refers to cartilage, right guys? Are you uh, focusing? It refers to what? Cartilage. So, it is actually coming from cartilage. Cartilage is later becoming bone, right? That is the enchondral layer, which is there in the middle. So, guys, the bone here, the bone of the bony labyrinth, you can see the bony, bony labyrinth will be outside, right? That bony labyrinth, um, in that the enchondral layer that is in the middle looks like that one is becoming spongy. Okay, so that's what they are telling here. The dense enchondral layer of the bony otic capsule is uh, replaced with what irregularly laid spongy bone. Okay, so now what happens if this happens? So what do you think has happened here? The stapes cannot move properly, right? So there is stapes fixation. So what are they saying here? The stapes uh, fixation is happening and the person will have conductive deafness. We told you, right? It is not able to conduct the sound. So, it may also involve other areas of the bony labyrinth and hence there can be neurosensory loss or sensory neural loss or sometimes they can have no symptoms also. All that is possible. Okay? So, we have looked at the OT capsule layers and we looked at what introduction to um, otosclerosis we have looked at, right? This much is done. Now, we have to go to etiology. Let's go to etiology, the causes. Why does this happen? Why does this bo bone become uh, spongy? Right? Let's look at this. So, basically, exact cause, they don't know. And uh, they only think that, um, basically, they are blaming one particular area. This is a fissula antefenestrum lying in front of the oval window. This is the site of predilection of for stepidial type of autospongiosis. So, there are many types of uh, autospongiosis in that you have stepidial type. In that, which site is mainly uh, 
active or affected is fissula antefenestram which is lying in front of the oval window guys did you understand anything at all there's a particular area in front of the oval window which gets affected more looks like okay that is the anatomical basis then hereditary some people have this autosomal dominant trait guys it is dominant autosomal dominant trait some people genetically can have this then white people can have this females are affected more uh, um, what are they saying females are affected twice as more as males in india in india females are affected more looks like and especially in pregnancy and even during menopause okay and the age is around 30 years so you can see here female um, has hearing loss so guys we are done with etiology what did you learn let's see whites female pregnancy menopause what else did you see 30 years 30 years you should remember usually 30 year people around that okay what else and we don't know always you should say we don't know also why it happens autosomal dominant trait one of the etiologies is autosomal dominant guys the etiology is continued some more is there some uh, some people can have osteogenesis imperfecta which is uh, accompanied with this uh, uh, autosclerosis okay so they, they can have a triad autogenesis imperfecta autosclerosis and blue sclera see this blue sclera so this is called as van der hove syndrome okay look at this what and all they'll have osteogenesis imperfecta that is indicating all the fractures blue sclera you can see the white part of the eye has become blue that is blue sclera and they'll have auto spongiosis so autogenesis sorry osteogenesis imperfecta blue sclera and auto sclerosis together if these three are there what is that is what is that called as van, van der hove syndrome hove syndrome they may say maybe the e is silent and one more thing they are blaming virus measles they are blaming okay so let's add that here to our uh, thing what is that they can have one not one it is van van der hove syndrome then you have measles okay may blame some virus also okay so now yes we are done with the etiology of otosclerosis now let us go to pathology pathology is what what do you think you will see in the pathology gross and microscopy two things you have to write what will you write in gross Otosclerotic lesion which has chalky white, uh, grayish yellow, yes, red in color due to increased vascularity. This only you will see, what will you see guys, chalky white, you saw, you have already seen how it looks, right? Microscopically what will you see? Spongy bone appears in the normally dense enchondral layer of OT capsule, same thing, you will see spongy bone in the microscope. See normally in any long bone, <clears throat> inside whatever you have is the spongy bone, that is also called as the cancellous bone. Something like this we should be able to see in the microscope. So that itself, when they are looking at, they will be seeing what and all osteoblast, osteoclast. <clears throat> Actually, osteoclast is the bad guy, right? So it's going to eat away the bone cells kind of thing. Blast will become site, isn't it? Blast is a good thing. It is giving birth to new bone, bone cells. Osteoblast can become osteocyte, but this clast is a bad thing. So, but whatever they are seeing under the microscope, what are they seeing? Blast and clast. And a lot of cement substance which is stains blue with hematoxylin and eosinophil. Something does like this, it stains more basophilic than normal. So this is the pathology guys. Pathology we finished off um, autosclerosis. Something mature and all, it will become something little different. You have to read all that. So we are done with what now? We are done with pathology. Pathology over guys, what did you see? Some specific word is blue mantles in microscopy. Gross is otherwise some same gro uh, uh, grayish white something lesion right chalky white grayish yellow lesion that's it so now we are done with pathology guys let's move on types of photosclerosis now okay types of photosclerosis what are the types you have the stepedial otosclerosis that is what is shown here right stepes stepedial otosclerosis so here in this if it is anterior it is anterior if it's posterior it is posterior if it is somewhere um, in the foot plate but annular ligament being free it is called biscuit type if it is complete, if there is complete obliteration of the oval window, it may completely obliterate the oval window, then it is called as obliterated type. How many types under stepedial? Here. Yeah. Look at this. Under stepedial, you have anterior focus, posterior, circumferential, biscuit, and obliterated. Let us see. Anterior, posterior, circumferential, biscuit type, thick plate, obliterated. Entire oval window is obliterated. 
so anterior posterior circumferential biscuit and oblique retina okay so these are the types in stepedial and other than stepedial what do you have you have cochlear otosclerosis cochlear otosclerosis means see currently what has been affected because of the stepedial uh, foot plate the oval window is affected now if uh, leave this oval window everything else if it's affected like round window or other areas in the otic capsule then it is called as uh, cochlear okay cochlear is round window and other areas but not the oval don't consider oval window histologic means only histology is affected otherwise patient is asymptomatic okay so we are done with the types guys so types are done so types we saw what and all stepedial under which you have another five types looks like then you have cochlear then you have histologic right very good so now let's move on to symptoms so we are going we are almost done with half we have to complete uh, symptoms signs etc how about it guys let's go to symptoms what do you think these people will have symptoms you only can see hearing loss obviously they'll have hearing loss and uh, this will be conductive hearing loss uh, has to be there and then sensory neural can happen it, it this is the presenting complaint they come with this complaint and at what age at 20s itself these people have this is painless progressive they don't have any pain they don't even have any pain progressive with slowly this bone is developing progressive nature they are having hearing loss often it is bilateral remember it's bilateral bilateral so we'll put a photo like this so both the ears this is this right ear this is left ear like that you remember and you remember that uh, both have undergone otosclerosis or bilateral condition okay so then you have something called as paracusis will is will is ii look at the spelling will is ii that is these people can hear better in noisy environment than uh, quiet at home they can't hear but when they go to mall and all they can hear nicely why because people are speaking a little loudly there so these people can hear better in uh, noisy environments okay So that is paracusis will is i i okay now why this happens because look at their hearing hearing loss look at this how their hearing has become it has come down right are you able to see so they need higher decibels for uh, for them to hear they need more intensity for them to hear that is why when they go to outside environment <clears throat> because of the noise they can hear better then coming to tinnitus tinnitus it is commonly seen in cochlear otosclerosis and in active lesions that is if they are in active phase they can have tinnitus ringing of the ear what is tinnitus ringing of the ear without having any external stimulus so they can have um, um, active if they have active lesion then they can have this problem or if they have cochlear otosclerosis that means the round window is involved or something else is involved in the otic capsule then they can have tinnitus vertigo vertigo is what the spinning of the world around them Uh, um, they don't have a balance or um, disorientation to space kind of a thing right this is an uncommon symptom not much they are saying this photo is to show vertigo but this is a very uncommon symptom they are saying we'll just put a very small photo to indicate vertigo okay speech pace patient has monotonous well modulated soft speech they speak softly they don't their voice will not become high pitch low pitch they have a very monotonous speech like they can uh, the students in the class can sleep of kind of a voice monotonous sleep okay who has monotonous speech speech otosclerosis guys why but i don't know Wh why otosclerosis why their speech is so monotonous okay so we're done with symptoms so this is explaining paracusis will is i again <clears throat> then what else what did you see in symptoms guys hearing loss paracusis will is i i then some amount of tinnitus especially if it's cochlear type of um, otosclerosis then vertigo can be there and lastly we saw something monotonous voice monotonous voice or speech okay these people will do that now we have to look at signs differential diagnosis treatment we'll take this in the next video what do you say signs differential diagnosis and treatment part signs is something that a doctor sees right and then differential diagnosis you have to come to and treatment you will do so all the doctor part kind of a thing we will look at in the next video okay um let's take a recap quick recap what did we look at in this video what is otosclerosis otosclerosis is a problem with the bony labyrinth disease of bony labyrinth i would like to say it's an inner ear problem what do you say somewhere between middle ear and inner ear okay so the uh, dense endochondral layer of the otic capsule bony otic capsule is getting replaced by irregular laid spongy bone so there can be stapes fixation and conductive deafness then later on the person can have neurosensory uh, hearing loss also okay 
then uh, we saw the layers of the uh, otic capsule then we saw etiology causes will be like unknown anatomical basis at particular area this can happen hereditary autosomal dominant trait it is whites are affected more females especially uh, who are pregnant and uh, have, are in menopause can undergo this 30 years age they are saying mainly other uh, etiology are osteogenesis imperfecta uh, uh, linked uh, what is that syndrome van der hove syndrome then viral infection like measles also people can get otosclerosis then we saw the pathology pathology we saw that in gross it will be chalky white lesions grayish yellow microscopically you will see spongy bone what will that have osteoblasts what is osteoclast cement substance that is blue mantles okay then uh, we saw types of otosclerosis we saw stapedial otosclerosis that is having uh, again uh, five types under it you have the anterior posterior circumferential biscuit and obliterative then cochlear otosclerosis other parts of the otic capsule region of round window etc histological otosclerosis is microscopic not uh, asymptomatic kind of a thing stapedial we saw anterior posterior circumferential biscuit and obliterator then symptoms we saw hearing loss that is uh, bilateral bilateral is very important word here bilateral conductive hearing loss paracusis will is i <clears throat> patient hear better in uh, a noisy environment they hear better in noisy environment right uh, tinnitus uh, seen mostly in cochlear uh, uh, otosclerosis and active lesions uh, i think uh, we need to focus guys we are looking at what symptoms yes um, then uh, vertigo it is uncommon symptom monotonous speech very good then we looked at uh, symptoms we have looked at now we have to continue with signs signs so what and all you will see kahart notch and uh, schwartz sign uh, all this we will see we will come to it then we will see what else in the next video we will look at <clears throat> differential diagnosis you should be able to differentiate it from serous otitis media adhesive otitis media tympanosclerosis <clears throat> oscular uh, ossicular discontinuity stapes congenital stapes fixation fixation of head of malleus etc treatment what is there medical treatment we have to look at sodium fluoride surgical stepidectomy stepidotomy right and uh, after doing that you will give them a teflon piston etc then hearing aid uh, etc also you can prescribe so all the uh, stepidectomy steps how do you select the patient contraindications for the surgery complications everything we have to look at in the next period so we have completed the uh, introduction to otosclerosis in the next video we'll continue with the signs okay guys we'll continue with this much in the next video bye bye